The Lymphatic System by Allison Springer and Esther Gardner. The lymphatic system returns leaked plasma proteins and interstitial fluid back to the blood via the lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels are a network of drainage vessels. The vessels offer a one-way system to make sure lymph flows in one direction towards the heart. Once interstitial fluid enters lymphatics, it then becomes lymph. Lymph vessels include lymphatic capillaries and larger lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic capillaries are vessels that weave between blood capillaries and tissue cells. They can act as a route for pathogens or cancer cells to travel throughout the body. They are similar to blood capillaries but are more permeable. Lymphatic capillaries are absent from bones, teeth, bone marrow, and the central nervous system. The lacteals are lymph capillaries present in interstitial mucosa. Lacteals absorb digestive fat and deliver chyle to the blood. Chyle is a milky fluid consisting of fat droplets and lymph. It drains from the lacteals of the small intestine into the lymphatic system during digestion. Lymphatic vessels are also known as larger lymphatic vessels. Lymph capillaries drain into larger vessels called collecting lymphatic vessels, which consist of trunks, collecting vessels, and ducts. Lymphatic vessels have structures and tunics similar to veins, except that they have thinner walls with more internal valves. The lymphatic trunk, it drains large areas of the body, such as paired lumbar, paired subclavian, paired bronchiomediastinal, single intestinal trunk, and paired jugular trunk. Distribution of lymph vessels. Lymph is delivered from trunks into one to two large lymphatic ducts. Right lymphatic duct drains the right side of the head, right upper arm, and thorax. The thoracic drains the rest of the body. The Christina chile is located in the region between the last thoracic and the second lumbar vertebrae. It receives lymphatic drainage from the left side of the thorax, left side of the head, and left upper limb. Both ducts empty its limb into the venous circulation at the junction of the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein on its own side of the body. Lymph transport. Lymph transport is sporadic and slow. It has a low pressure system like the venous system. When physical activity or passive movements increase, lymph flows much more rapidly. Lymph mechanisms promote venous return in blood vessels by milking action of skeletal muscle, valves to prevent backflow, pressure changes in the thorax during breathing, contractions of smooth muscle in walls of the lymphatics, pulsations of nearby arteries. One common homeostatic imbalance of the lymph transport is lymphedema, which is severe localized edema. It is caused by anything that prevents normal return of lymph to the blood. Lymphoid cells. Lymph cells consist of immune system cells found in lymphoid tissues together with the supporting cells. Lymphocytes are the main warriors of the immune system. There are two major varieties of T cells and B cells. They both protect the body against antigens. Activated T cells manage the immune response, and some of them directly attack infected cells, versus the B cells, which protect the body by producing plasma cells that secrete antibodies. Antibodies mark antigens for destruction. Macrophages and dendritic cells are another type of immune system cell. Macrophages play a crucial role in body protection and immune response by phagocytizing foreign substances. Dendritic cells capture antigens and bring them back to the lymph nodes. Reticular cells are a supporting lymphoid cell that produces reticular fibers called stroma, which is in the network that supports the other cell types in lymphoid organs and tissues. Lymphoid tissue. Lymphoid tissue is an important component of the immune system because it offers surveillance vantage points for macrophages and lymphocytes houses and provides prophylation sites 
for lymphocyte. Lymphoid tissue is composed of loose connective tissue called reticular connective tissue. It dominates all lymphoid organs except the thalamus. There are two main types of lymphoid tissue, diffuse lymphoid tissues and lymphoid follicles, also known as nodules. Diffuse lymphoid tissues is a loose arrangement of reticular fibers and lymphoid cells. Lymphoid follicles, also known as nodules, are tightly packed lymphoid cells and reticular fibers that contain germinal centers and profiling B cells. Lymphoid organs. Lymphoid organs are grouped into two functional categories, primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs are where B and T cells mature, bone marrow and thalamus, while both B cells and T cells originate in the bone marrow, red bone marrow. B cells mature in the red bone marrow and T cells mature in the thymus. Secondary lymphoid organs are where matured lymphocytes first encounter their antigens and are activated. This includes the spleen, lymph nodes, malt that forms the tonsils, pyres patches in small intestines, and appendix. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are the most important part of the secondary lymphoid organs. They cluster along the lymphatic vessels of the body. Lymph nodes are embedded in connective tissue and they are not visible. Lymph nodes have two basic functions. Immune system activation is where they offer a place for lymphatics, lymphocytes to become activated and mount an attack against antigens. And also cleansing the lymph. Macrophages remove and destroy microorganisms and other debris that enter the lymph. They also prevent debris from delivering to the blood and spreading to other parts of the body. Lymph nodes can also become secondary cancer sites if the cancer cells become trapped in the node. Structure of a lymph node. Most are bean shaped and less than two and a half centimeters. They vary in size and shape. Each lymph node is surrounded by a dense fibrous capsule from which connective tissue strands called trabeculae extends inward to divide the node into several compartments. Throughout the lymph node are lymph sinuses. They are large lymphatic capillaries spanned by crisscrossing reticular fibers. There are two distinct regions of the node, the cortex and the medulla. The cortex is the superficial part of the cortex contains densely packed follicles, mainly with germinal centers heavy with dividing B cells. The deeper part of the cortex houses T cells that circulates the blood. The medulla is the inner region of the node. This houses medullary cords that extends inward from the cortex, which contains T cells, B cells, and plasma cells. Circulation of lymph nodes. Lymph enters the convex side of a lymph node via afferent lymphatic vessel. It then travels through a large subcapular sinus into a number of small sinuses that cut through the cortex and enters the medulla. Lymph enters the medullary sinus and exit the node at its hilum via efferent lymphatic vessel. The spleen is a blood-rich organ located in the left side of the abdominal cavity just below the stomach. It is about the size of a fist. It is the largest lymphoid organ in the body. The spleen stores blood platelets and monocytes for release into the blood. It may be a site of erythrocyte production in the fetus. It also recycles the breakdown products of red blood cells for later reuse. The spleen. White pulp is where immune functions take place. It is composed mostly of lymphocytes suspended on reticular fibers. White pulp clusters are found around central arteries and they also appear red. Red pulp is a site where old blood cells and bloodborne pathogens are destroyed. They are composed of splenic cords that separate blood filled splenic sinusoids. Mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, also known as malt. Malt is a set of distributed lymphoid tissues located in the mucosa membrane throughout the body. Malt protects the pathogens from trying to enter the body. 
The largest collection of malt are found in pyres, patches, tonsils, and appendix. The tonsils are the simplest lymphoid organ. They form a ring of lymphoid tissue around the entrance to the pharynx, where they appear as swelling of the mucosa. The tonsils' function is to gather and remove pathogens in food and or air. The palatine tonsils are located at the posterior end of the oral cavity. They are the largest tonsils and they are more prone to infection. Lingual tonsils are a lumpy collection of follicles at the base of the tongue. Pharyngeal tonsils, also known as the adenoids, are located in the posterior wall of the nasopharynx. The overlying of the epithelial creates tonsillar crypts. The crypts traps and destroys bacteria. Pyres patches and the appendix. Pyres patches are a large cluster of lymphoid follicle. They are located in the wall of the distal portion of the small intestine. They destroy bacteria, which prevents them from breaching the intestinal wall, and they also generate memory lymphocytes. The appendix is a tubular offshoot of the first part of the large intestine. It contains a high concentration of lymphoid follicles. Just like the pyres patches, the appendix prevents bacteria from entering the intestinal wall, and the appendix generates memory lymphocytes. The thymus is a bilobed lymphoid organ found in the inferior neck and extends into the superior thorax. In the thymus, T lymphocytes mature to become immunocompetent. The thymus contains an outer cortex and the inner medulla. The cortex contains dividing lymphocytes and scattered macrophages. The medulla contains fewer lymphocytes. The thymus contains no B cells and does not directly fight antigens. The stroma of the thymus consists of epithelial cells rather than reticular cells. The end.